Hey guys, so I'll be showing you how to make these miniature world photos from 360 degree panoramic uh, photos using Photoshop. Here's the 360 pano, and this is what you'll be able to create. Here's a table of contents in case you wish to skip to any of the sections, but I recommend watching it all because I will have many tips for creating these images from shooting the 360 degree panorama to processing it in Photoshop throughout the entire video. After shooting the panorama, I like to use the program PT GUI to make the panoramic image. I would not really recommend using Photoshop if you don't have to, because Photoshop gets extremely laggy and clunky after it tries to align like the fifth image. But that's not to say that you can't use Photoshop. I've certainly used Photoshop to create 360 degree panoramic images before, but I would recommend a few things if you want to do that. Firstly, I would recommend that you downsize all of your images first. I mean, cut the resolution in half or even by a fourth. You'll be aligning, depending on how wide angle your lens is, it'll be aligning anywhere from 30 to 40 images, so you're going to have plenty of resolution to work with. Also, process the photos in small groups. Photoshop is decent at aligning, you know, a handful of images, but once you give it, like, more than 8 or 10, it just gets really bad. Lastly, after combining them into small groups, of course, combine those groups into one final image, and that will just make life so much easier if you're going to use Photoshop and make things far less clunky and much more streamlined. Anyways, here's some more examples of uh, little planet images that I've done before. This was a 360 degree panoramic of my backyard made from that. Uh, here's another one of our school. So anyways, uh, today we'll be looking at how we went about shooting this photo and how we're going to wrap it around itself to get this little planet photo of our college campus. Again, the table of contents is located in the beginning of the video and within the video description in case you want to skip any time within the video. So let's get started with shooting the 360 degree panorama. So sorry our microphone was uh, not cooperating in this first clip here, but all I was saying was uh, my choice of location. I had some interesting buildings here, and I was thinking that I was going to be using this building right here as probably my subject for the panorama. Now, what I've noticed about making these photos is you actually want to be pretty close to your subjects. You really want them in uh, the middle ground or foreground, definitely not in the background, because for instance with a photo like this, um, I thought these oak trees and the rocks back here, in person they seem fairly close, but once you make it into a panorama and wrap it around, it all just kind of gets really really small and all hidden in the background, and it just doesn't look that nice. Also, what you want to look out for is stuff that's very close to you and towering high above you. It was looking like these trees over here might have been a problem, but as long as you can capture the sky above it reasonably without having to, like, specifically take extra photos for that, you should be fine. So here, uh, shooting the actual panorama, I prefer to be on something like grass or uh, something nature so I can clone stamp it and patch it out later. Because if I was on the bricks or the concrete, it might be really hard to try and get the lines uh, to line up. So to get your exposure right, uh, you want the sun to be just out of the frame and then see what exposure you like there. And then since it's a, it's a 360 panorama, just check everything around you and just see if you like it and then you can obviously adjust accordingly. Um, you obviously want to be on full manual everything, including white balance, just in case. Uh, if you're shooting in RAW, you can obviously correct that later. Um, also, I find that tripod at maybe torso or waist level is fine. If it's any higher, when you look down for the shots of the ground, uh, the legs might be in it, and also the shadow is uh, shorter, if the tripod's shorter. So you don't need some sort of like crazy $300 panoramic head. Uh, just make sure your tripod is level with this uh, bubble because when you rotate the head of the tripod, uh, you want it to just be as level as possible all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking all of the photos. Also, you want to make sure it's not on a two second timer if you're using a remote. <laughs> So 
So now since I'm back to my starting point, I'm gonna go ahead and point it up at the sky and get uh, all of the sky shots. Unfortunately, no clouds today, but oh well. We live in Southern California where like clouds don't exist after a certain time of year. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get the ground photos. I always like to photograph a little bit extra ground. Uh, just to make sure I get everything. And if I have more than enough, I can always crop it out later. Okay, now that we have this 360 degree panorama photographed and imported into the computer, I'm gonna talk about processing those photos for PT GUI. Now supposedly PT GUI is supposed to be able to open up raw photos, except every time I've tried it, it's crashed. Anyways, here's my workflow. Firstly, what I've done is here in Bridge, I've went ahead and labeled each photo that was aimed more towards the sun and has the sky a little bit blown out, and um, I'll get to why I did that in a sec. So what I'm going to go ahead and do in the meantime is, like a true madman, I'm going to go ahead and select all 37 of my raw exposures and open them all up in Photoshop. I'm also going to pray that it doesn't crash. So here you're going to want to do your basic editing and corrections like distortion and one thing that you really want to do is um, fix any lens vignetting. This will help align and blend your images. Also depending on what your workflow is going to be, you can either stylize your photos here entirely in Camera Raw or you can choose to preserve your details and stylize it later in Photoshop. As for me, I'd go ahead and stylize it later in Photoshop, so I'd preserve some of the details by, for instance, bringing out the shadows a bit, bringing down the exposure just a tad. Obviously, I'd be doing a better job at this, but for the sake of this tutorial and saving your time. Once I'm happy with my results, I'll go ahead and hit Select All, Synchronize, and synchronize everything that I want to, well, synchronize. Also, what you would want to pay attention for is any lens spots. Now, as you can see, uh, the photos that I marked that were a bit more blown out show up here in Camera Raw as well. So I'd go ahead and select uh, those photos, or firstly select one of those photos, and bring the highlights down just a lot more for that. This will get you a much nicer looking sky, especially if you had clouds uh, that day go ahead and select your other photos that you marked hit synchronize and just choose highlights hit ok and once you're satisfied with all of your editing done on any of your photos hit done go to adobe bridge and we're going to use image processor to convert this to either jpeg or tiff I'm going to go ahead and use TIFF, and I'm also going to resize all of my photos down to 3000 by 3000 pixels. This will just make it easier for PT GUI to output and process all the photos so it doesn't have to sift through just as much data. Again, we're doing 37 different photos, at all at a resolution of 3000 by 3000. We're still going to have quite enough resolution here. All right, so let's talk about making the panorama in PT GUI. Okay, so once all of your photos are done converting, go ahead and locate all of them, select all of them, and drag them into PT GUI. Give it a second to load all of them. Also, double check that your camera and lens parameters are being read correctly. Uh, sometimes it'll mess up, and that can sometimes really screw around with the uh, panoramic. So just go ahead and double check that this is all correct. And if it's all good, go ahead and click align images. It'll take about a minute to align everything. If some of the images don't align properly, go ahead and go to PT GUI's website or YouTube channel and they have a video on how to manually set control points and align your images in case that happens. Okay, so now that the panoramic is lined up and all stitched together, you can of course click and drag to adjust what you want uh, to be the center of your panoramic. Um, this doesn't really matter for creating the miniature planets because you can just rotate that in Photoshop. 
If you accidentally click and drag up or down, it'll get this crazy wavy stuff going on, so go ahead and hit this straighten button up here. So once you're satisfied with that, go back into the PT GUI interface and cre say create panorama. Hit set optimum size and click maximum size. Uh, in my case, this is almost 15,000 pixels, but honestly, I like putting it at 10,000 or lower because really, it just doesn't need to be that big. And you know, don't even bother commenting, that's what she said. Um, but seriously, like, unless you're trying to print this the size of a wall again, um, just you don't need that much resolution. It'll keep Photoshop running a lot easier. And in fact, uh, anything 5,000 or larger is more than big enough. That photo I showed you of our backyard and our house as a miniature planet was actually output at 5,000 pixels, and that's still a high-resolution image. So I'm going to go ahead and save as a Photoshop format. You want to save as uh, 8 bits, because if you save in 16 bits, it sometimes won't let you do the filters in Photoshop that will have to be using. So after that, browse where you want to save it and hit Create Panorama. Alright, so go ahead and open up your panoramic in Photoshop, and what I like to do first is crop the image so that the horizon line is about in the middle. This is going to be a good starting point, and we're going to be coming back and adjusting this later, depending on how it ends up looking for your image, depending if we want more foreground or less foreground in our miniature planet. So make sure delete cropped pixels is checked, because if it's not checked, then when you go to apply the distortion filter, uh, small children will cry. I may have embellished that a little bit. So also double click or duplicate your background. I'm just going to double click it to make it a layer. Now go to your image size and uncheck constrain proportions and make this a perfect square. Hit OK. Now with that layer selected, go to Filter, Distort, and Polar Coordinates. And again, if the Distortion category or Polar Coordinates effect is grayed out, then make sure you're working in 8 bits per channel, or if it's still grayed out, then try downsizing your image altogether. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that filter now. Now in the preview loads, you'll see that if I apply this filter with this image oriented like this, it'll give it kind of this tunneling effect. So you can see this better. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. So that'll end up looking something like this, which can be pretty interesting for some shots. But I'm going to go back in my history here to where I made it a perfect square. And then I'm going to go to Image, Rotation, and rotate it 180 degrees. And now, once I apply the polar coordinates filter, it will make a little planet. So here's where polar coordinates gets us, and again, as I was saying, it just looks like there's way too much of the grass and the foreground here in the image. So once again, I'm going to go back in my history, and you can go back to where you made it a square or before you made it a square and crop it once again. So I'm going to get rid of even more of the foreground. Again, make sure delete cropped pixels is checked. Apply the cropping and once again make this a perfect square. Again, rotate the image 180 degrees and continue to crop and adjust until you're happy with what polar coordinates is giving you as far as your proportion of foreground to middle ground. So once you're satisfied with the results, here's where you can rotate your image. Just hit Command T with your layer selected, and you can rotate uh, what you want to be on top or on the bottom, etc. Now I tend to think that these images often get really bulgy towards the middle and really squished towards the uh, top. I've downsized my image a lot just so it's not lagging for the sake of this tutorial. Don't worry about the transparency and semi-transparency here. Save that until the last step. But for now, I'm going to explain how I like to correct some of this distortion here. 
I like to use two filters called sphere eyes and pinch in conjunction uh, to help stretch out the sky a bit and help remove the bulge in the middle here. Again, don't even bother commenting, that's what she said. So with pinch, go ahead and zoom out in the preview here and hit the amount to zero. Just adjust uh, to your liking. This will stretch the sky out a bit. Hit OK. And for every image, uh, these two filters will be used a bit differently. Uh, just use it to your liking and whatever looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Sphere Eyes here, and this will help remove some of the bulge in the middle. Zoom out to see the preview. Then bring this down a bit. And yes, these two filters do overall scale down the image quite a bit, but again, you're working with gigantic resolution photos, and a photo like this, if you're not going to print this, then these images really need to be seen in their entirety. And I mean, the biggest wallpapers are like in the mid 2000 pixels, so you're just going to have plenty of resolution to work with unless you're like hoarding resolution for some reason. Some images it's much more noticeable than others. This one it's not too much of a drastic change. In my opinion it helps a little bit, uh, but for this backyard panorama again, uh, I'm sorry I don't have a before and after photo for you, but here's the final result of it and I had to correct the distortion on this a lot. So if I hadn't, it would just be incredibly bulgy in the middle and squished in the sky and you like really wouldn't see any of the clouds or the stars there and just kind of look really amateur. So of course when you're happy with that, you can go ahead and crop this to your liking and after you're done cropping, of course you can go ahead and clone stamp, patch, content aware, fill, anything, uh, especially the middle right there. I like to use um, content aware fill first uh, and sometimes maybe the patch tool and then use clone stamp just to clean up the edges a little bit. Alright guys, well I hope this was helpful and I hope you learned something from it. Feel free to check out my Facebook page in DeviantArt, got some awesome photography up there. Uh, check out my other tutorials here on YouTube, got a lot of stuff in After Effects. Anyways, get out there and shoot some amazing 360 degree panoramics. Feel free to leave any comments and questions here on the video. I'll try and answer as many as I can. Again, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time.